Hello, friends. It's good to be with you. We are publishing this episode on the 4th of July, which is, of course, an important date in our country's history. Um, Independence Day, of course, uh, talking about independence uh, from Great Britain after the Revolutionary War. Um, that got me thinking today about freedom and uh, what, what are we freed from as Christians? And that got me thinking of a book I'm familiar with uh, called Freedom for Ministry. I actually quoted this in a sermon on Pentecost. That author talks about how uh, we are ambassadors of a disputed sovereign. Uh, we maybe will provide a, a link to that sermon if you want to listen to that. But I want to talk about four different theological understandings of freedom. Um, this is a big topic in our culture right now. You know, are we all free? Uh, is this, in fact, a free country? Uh, how do we encourage freedom for everyone? Um, and again, as a pastor, I want to come at this uh, from a theological bent today. So I want to talk about uh, a couple of verses from the Bible. I want to talk about uh, Martin Luther very briefly, and then I want to talk about two um, comments from two of my favorite authors, C.S. Lewis, and again, uh, Richard John Newhouse, who wrote the book uh, that includes the title Freedom, Freedom for Ministry. So in Galatians, just a couple of verses that talk about freedom explicitly. This is Paul's letter to the Galatians. We are told, uh, or Paul tells us, I should say, for you were called to freedom, brothers and sisters. Only do not use your freedom as an opportunity for self-indulgence, but through love become slaves to one another. That's Galatians 5.13. And then more simply in Galatians 5, Paul says, It is for freedom that Christ has set us free. That's the biblical passages. We could uh, unpack those more. Uh, I mentioned Martin Luther. I've talked about this before, but it seems appropriate to remind us. Uh, when Luther was alive, the spellings of names as well as the spellings of all kinds of words were not standardized yet uh, in written German. Uh, his own last name was spelled in a variety of ways uh, by his father. Luther decided to standardize the spelling that we know today, L-U-T-H-E-R, because it comes from a Greek word that means freed. So when Luther would sign his name, Martin Luther, what he was saying is Martin the freed one, or Martin the one who God has made free. It was such a powerful, uh, deeply significant uh, biblical idea for Luther that he turned his very name into a name that means the freed one. Uh, so that briefly, again, we could talk a lot more about that, but that strikes me as a really um, meaningful reminder for us today. Uh, again, going back, uh, Galatians was a very important book for Luther, <clears throat> and the topic of freedom clearly was. Um, this is a little bit of stream of consciousness, but again, I, I, I started thinking about this because of the title of this book. I already mentioned that. And because of some of the topics in this book, it got me thinking about another uh, very important essay by C.S. Lewis. This is in a little book called Fern, Seed, and Elephants. I think I've mentioned this in a prior episode. Um, <clears throat> and this is an essay called Membership. Right? And so you've heard the language of, as Christians, we are members of the body of Christ. Maybe that's a biblical image. And Lewis is talking in this essay about, um, at the time he lived, the, the sort of tension between the collective, so this would be particular political forms of thought that were encouraging a collectivism in his day versus the individual. And, and C.S. Lewis wants to remind us that at the end, uh, we are called to be neither part of a collective nor exclusively individuals, but part of a new creation in Christ. And just a couple of things that he lifts up in this beautiful uh, reflection on the Pauline understanding of what it means to be a member of the body of Christ. First, he says, the Christian is called not to individualism, but to membership in the mystical body. And then he says, just a few lines later, uh, later uh, he explains what St. Paul means by being a member. And he says, by members, he meant what we would call organs, things essentially different from and complementary, complementary to one another. So we're different, but complementary. 
We need one another and we need one another in our differences. And this strikes me as a very important uh, insight in our culture today. Uh, we're not all called to be the same. God invites us, he calls us, he uh, challenges us to live into our differences because the body of Christ needs those differences. <clears throat> and then finally, that brings us to this um, book I started with, Freedom for Ministry. Um, and I'll start with this uh, a line I love. I love it so much it actually hangs on my office uh, wall or an extended play version of what I'm about to say. But Newhouse reminds us that we, all of us, need to get away from the fear of being different from one another, right? And instead to live into that difference so that we can free others also to be different. When we are afraid to act upon the difference to which we are called, he says, we inhibit others from acting upon the difference to which they are called. Again, this idea of uh, different but complementary, right? Which requires courage on the part of each of us to be free enough to actually be the person God made us to be. And I will end with this one. And this again, uh, we've been talking about the body of Christ, about community. Newhouse reminds us, real community is not homogeneity. Well, it's not all the same, right? Real community is not homogeneity. It is the discipline and devotion of disparate people, different people, people who are not the same, bearing with one, or one another in the hard tasks of love. On this 4th of July, I pray that as Christians living in 2020, we can live into that beautiful future of freedom. Thanks as always for watching. Be well, stay in touch, and God bless.